How do I like the Ram Power Wagon after two years of ownership? Well, stick around and let's find out. All right, good morning, everybody. It is time for the two-year update to the Ram Power Wagon. And I'm hoping that the wind isn't too bad here in the lapel mic. I already moved locations once because it was just screaming down the road. But I wanted to go over a second year update on this truck and put a deep dive into what it's been like to have a power wagon after being a Ford fanboy for since I could drive. And uh, yeah, we'll go over, uh, you know, they're still good, but there's actually been some bad. Um, we're in we're in that, you know, second year of ownership and and uh, it's not all been good. So let's just jump right in here. Um, I'm gonna start with a few of the bad things. And uh, in May of 2021, uh, I had a wire short out under the driver's seat and uh, it caused all kinds of problems. Um, underneath the hood here where the tipum is, uh, or basically the power distro box, fuse box, whatever you wanna call it, there's a relay that controls the driver's seat and then there's a relay that controls the passenger seat and um, that when that wire shorted out on the frame of the seat uh, it was causing some problems with i noticed i'd have a low battery when i go to start the truck could never figure out why i had a low battery i'd throw it on a charger and everything was fine alternator was fine everything was good well fast forward a little bit at the same time I had the oil pressure sensor go out in the truck and uh, that was causing some grief trying to drive around the truck would ding and I'd get this random error message and I could never figure out what it was saying because it happened so fast on the screen that you couldn't see what the message said so after it finally started happening frequently enough um, I was actually headed up to the Boy Scout camp one day to do some work and uh, it was it was dinging at such a constant rate that the engine was actually stuttering like it was going into some kind of limp mode no check engine lights nothing like that um, but that oil pressure sensor was freaking out the computer on the truck and uh, you would physically like feel it stutter while you drove and so i turned around went immediately home called the dealer um, and they actually came and got it so while they were fixing that that wire under the seat has shorted out the entire way and was like completely grounded out. And when I got the truck back from the dealer, I couldn't move the seat and the lumbar was fully inflated. So that is a symptom of having that wire short out under the seat. And they fixed it, uh, rerouted it so it wouldn't do that and then replaced the entire fuse box or what they called the TIPM or TIPM. Um, and they replaced that, but uh, I'll throw a picture in here of that burnt uh, circuit breaker um in the video because i had no idea like if this would have gone on long enough it would have melted that tip them and it's actually a fire hazard still to this day there is no recall from ram about that um, that seems like a safety issue while my truck was up there at the dealer getting the oil pressure sensor fixed they had another truck in for the exact same problem with the shorted out wiring harness under the seat and had to fix it so I think they said they did three trucks in six weeks with the wiring harness shorted out uh, and it was all 2019 models. So that was extremely weird. So I've had wire short out and I've had oil pressure sensor uh, fail. Uh, the speedometer on the truck has started ticking. You'll be driving around, it'll just sit there and do that. I tried to take some video of that driving this morning. It's kind of hard, a lot of traffic, but you should be able to see in the video clip that the speedometer was just sitting there ticking and it's kind of kind of annoying it's one of those things like i don't stare at the speedometer but when i look down at it to make sure that i'm still going an appropriate speed it's ticking so there's you know your third negative um, let's go into some positives um, the truck is is it's, it's still an awesome truck um, Fuel economy is one of those interesting things that a lot of people want to know about on the power wagons. We have two ethanol-free gas stations uh, in northern Colorado that I can get to in a somewhat timely manner. They're about 30 
two miles round trip, no matter which way I go. There's actually three of them. There's one in Bertha and two in Fort Collins. When you run pure gasoline through these trucks, the fuel economy skyrockets. And I mean notably increases. I went uh, on a two hour trip up to Laramie and back down to Walden to look at something and then came back the same way. Didn't fill up in Laramie, was on the same tank of fuel. 15.1 mile per gallon, two hours, 250 miles-ish, somewhere in that vicinity of driving. Um, or yeah, it was about, yeah, yeah, somewhere in that 200 miles. So two hours, 200 miles, 15.1 miles per gallon, verified at the pump when I filled back up in town. That's not what the dash said. The dash actually said even higher, and I figured that was kind of wrong. The dash said like 15.8, and I was like, yeah, that, mm -mm, no. So verified at the pump, fill up, let it click off, kind of wait like, you know, 15 seconds, hit it again, let it click off one more time, 15.1 mile per gallon. The lifetime average fuel economy of this truck over like 20, basically 23,000 miles, uh, 12.3 miles per gallon. That's from zero to 23,000 miles, 12.3 miles per gallon. When you put a somewhat heavy trailer behind the truck, it seems to get eight, just eight, period. Whether you're pulling completely full loads of firewood or I'm pulling my Jeep on the car hauler that I had to borrow, which that car hauler was heavy. And then on top of that, you know, put a 5,000 pound Jeep on top of a 3,000 pound trailer, eight miles per gallon in a Wyoming wind, not too bad. When you do about 75% highway, 25% city, it's getting 13 to 14, verifying at the pump. Um, I track it all on fuely.com. But when you're about 50-50 city uh, highway, I'm averaging 12 to 13. Hopefully that wind's not too bad. It just all of a sudden picked up again. If you're really heavy around town, I seem to be down around 12. Let me give the wind a minute to calm down here. Okay, that's a little better. So over the almost 23,000 miles that I've tracked uh, fuel economy on this truck, the average cost per mile to drive this over two calendar years has been 23 cents a mile. And that's not terrible for what this is and for how heavy it is. Since I've bought the truck, I have put in $5,280.49 worth of gasoline through the truck. And it's been great every minute of it. Um, there's my one complaint that I talked about in the previous video a year ago, which was the brakes. The brakes on this truck suck. Absolutely suck. I mean, suck. If you have to do a panic stop, good luck. They suck. So let me show you what I did here. Um, I'll grab the uh, GoPro and we'll take a little tour. So I just finally bit the bullet and hopefully you can see there's drilled and slotted rotors in here now. I put power stop brakes all the way around front and rear. The rears probably weren't necessary, but I just wanted everything to match. So that was quite the interesting chore to put brakes on one ton axles. I've never done that before. Good God, wind. Well, actually, tell you what, let's go inside the truck. It's less windy in here. So I put, see, I got my notes here. I put power stop brakes on the truck and it made an absolute night and day difference. Putting power stop brakes on is something that I should have done a long time ago. Um, I was holding out just to get some more use on them. You know, here's the actual mileage that I've driven the truck. Um, you know, 23,000 and some change in two years. So, you know, I'm not a heavy driver. I know people that do 40,000 in one year. But um, putting those power stop brakes on was by far the best thing I could have ever done. So I was purposely waiting just to get some more wear and tear on the brakes. But I finally got to the point to where I've had enough panic stops because people drive like absolute garbage in northern Colorado. I needed better brakes. 
and I do not regret doing it. It was about a $650 modification to the truck. Very well worth it. Um, let's talk about one other thing in here. Here's a major negative. This brain box up here holds all the adaptive cruise control stuff. This truck has been into the dealer twice for adaptive cruise control issues. It'll flash a warning on the dash, service uh, forward collision system, cruise control, oh, excuse me, service forward collision system, cruise control unavailable. Um, it just freaks out. And when it freaks out and you're driving somewhere with the cruise on, you lose your cruise control and you have to shut the cruise, you have to shut the truck off, turn it back on, and the warning will go away, hopefully, for a while. But one thing that the truck was doing was as you were following someone uh, with adaptive cruise on, and they would say, like, get in a right turn lane to turn, the truck would continue to match their speed, thinking that they were in front of you, and it would literally slam on the brakes. Um, so this adaptive cruise system that's in this truck, it has some uh, quirks and some learning that it needs to do yet. Uh, when I was just at the dealership, they actually flashed an update a huge update it took 90 minutes to reprogram the truck and the last time I used adaptive cruise all of a sudden I noticed the person that just got in the turn lane the truck didn't slam on the brakes so I think I think that's finally fixed so if you have a 2019 or 2020 that the truck slams on the brakes when someone is in front of you that gets in a turn lane I think there's an update for that I don't know what that update number was I have no idea but I know there's an update for it. Um, so, you know, you might want to check that out. Let's get back out of the truck and uh, check and see if it's still too windy. Nope, it's not. So let's crack the hood open. So if you remember a year ago, I put this S and B filter on and I have not changed the filter uh, since I put it on. Now I have tapped the dirt out of it um, and I've been, you know, off-road with this quite a bit. I'm trying to get so you can see the filter. But anyway, um, I just bought a new filter. I think I'm going to put it on. Um, I haven't noticed any, like, decreases in fuel economy or anything. But uh, you might, uh, you know, after a year and all this dirt, and I've, I've tried to blow this out and tap it out, it's getting kind of dirty. So, you know, it might be time to change it out. Um, that oil pressure sensor, I, we won't even be able to see it. It's way the heck down under, like in the front of the engine um, that they had to replace. But uh, back to the s &B filter here real quick. Um, this did not gain me any noticeable fuel economy. Like the truck still is averaging like 12.3, 12.5 overall. So that, that filter, it didn't really net me anything notable other than a little bit of a butt dyno, like stepping on it. The Ram factory box is actually a uh, forced air right into the cowl uh, when, the, when the baffles open up here. It rams air into the air box, but it had to go down and up to get in. Now it's a straight shot into the filter a straight shot into the motor so it definitely cleaned up the path that the air was taking to get into the truck into the engine um, so you know undetermined if that really made a terribly big difference but i do not remember if the last time we did a video i had put a power plug on the front of the truck but um, i did that uh, so i could you're on jumper cables off the front, or I actually modified my air compressor uh, to be able to plug in right there so I don't have to open the hood to get to the battery when I'm airing the truck up. So since it's still kind of a little breezy, let's jump back in the truck. Oh, here's one more thing I forgot to mention before we get in the truck. I don't know if I hit this on something. I don't think I did, but this has broken. So this little piece of plastic and this one parking sensor have kind of popped off. When I feel the back of this, there's nothing rough on either side like I hit this on something. 
I have no idea how that broke, but it broke. And that parking sensor's not been a problem. Everything's worked fine. But that little piece of plastic has broken. And I actually took the front chin spoiler completely off because I kept catching it on rocks and stuff off road and I was smashing it up when I'd get into the snow. So I just took it off and that made no discernible difference in fuel economy whatsoever. So let's jump back in the truck here and we'll set you guys up there and we'll finish this off. So let's go and I'm just going to be kind of blunt here. As as a Ford person, and I've, I've never hid that I'm a Ford person, I jumped into the Ram Power Wagon because I really wanted to try it. I was really impressed with the truck. Um, and I have a couple of friends that have Power Wagons that they've not had to do anything. Like one of them's got a hundred something thousand miles on it and they've never even had to replace a tie rod end. So from a hardware standpoint, these trucks are rock solid. Um, from an electronics side of the house and just weird, like glitchy things like a, a ticking speedometer that just, uh, I, mm, I've never had problems like that with a Ford. And I'm, I know that you're going to like roast me in the comments here, but I've not ever had these problems with Fords. My F-150, I had to replace the four-wheel drive hubs twice. Now that's a stupid design. Those are driven by a vacuum. So in order to engage your four-wheel drive in a Ford F-150, you have to pull a vacuum. When are you using four-wheel drive? When there's snow on the ground, when it's muddy, when there's pouring down rain and you're off-road or whatever, it's gonna get sucked into the hub. So I had to replace my four-wheel drive hubs twice. Once at 30,000 and then another at like 70,000. So let me make sure I didn't unplug you here. Nope. So, you know, everything's got its weird little things, but this truck by far has had more weird, quirky, annoying things than my F-150 did in the seven and a half years it was, I think, that I owned it. So will I stick with a power wagon or will I stick with the Ram brand when I finally decide to get rid of the truck? I usually keep trucks to about 100,000 miles. This truck probably won't get that far because I'm only doing about 10 to 12,000 miles a year because I have a second vehicle. Um, I don't know. I don't know with all the problems that I've had in this truck, and they're minor, they do not outweigh the positives. I was only focusing on the negative stuff in this video. I don't know uh, that I will stick with another power wagon. I'll probably go back to a Ford. Um, I want to try a Super Duty Tremor. I've never owned a Super Duty. I want to try the Tremor out. Um, so, you know, uh, this truck has been awesome. Do not get me wrong. If you are thinking about a power wagon, this truck has been awesome. It is an absolute beast off-road it will go anywhere. Um, so that has not changed. I do still love the truck. It just has had some weird, quirky things with that adaptive cruise and like that ticking speedometer, which I don't even want to think about what that's going to take to rip this entire dash off the front of the truck here and replace that dash cluster. That's got to be an annoyance. So you know, there's, there's one other little thing that I wasn't even really going to mention, but it involves the seat belt. When I take the seat belt off now, see how it's really slow to retract? So when you're buckled up and then you take the seat belt off, sometimes you have to sit there and screw with it to get it to retract all the way. Of course, right now it's going right in. But some, oh, there it goes. It just caught. So you see how it's, you have to, Come on, come on, get in there. So the seatbelt retractor has begun to wear out. There, it took the first time. So there, it's doing it again. So, you know, stupid little things like that that never happened in 
in seven years of having a Ford. So, you know, take what you want from this. Um, I focused on the negatives here on purpose uh, because there's been some negatives. Um, the first year there wasn't very many negatives, but the second year there's been some negatives. But this thing is still an absolute joy to drive. I love having a naturally aspirated V8 with a basically no muffler on it. Oh my God, it is so awesome. But um, just know what you're getting into. Uh, maybe the Fords even have these problems. There's a lot of technology in this truck that there hasn't been in, in uh, that I've ever had before. So could be just the technology, could be the Ram brand. No clue. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I got to get back down into town. I've got some customer stuff I need to deal with. And uh, happy birthday, Marine Corps. Happy Veterans Day. And I really hope... As you can tell, I'm, I'm in the forest here that's burned. Um, I'm still trying to get the Forest Service to let us in on some of these trails so we can start clearing them. That has been challenging. <laughs> we'll put it at that. It's been challenging. So I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope to be out four-wheeling here soon, snow bashing, making some more content. It's been kind of dry lately. Literally, I haven't put anything out because I haven't been able to go anywhere. It, I've been so busy, so... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.